you may have seen this uh, particular radio in the past where I uh, bought it and uh, I bought it for £25 on eBay and it was a manual tune radio which had a tuning knob like this and I demonstrated how this is a very good spurt box for manual tuning as uh, seen as it has a AM, FM and nine different shortwave bands but this radio was actually the plan was to make this fully automatic and scan like a spirit box with a me mechanical mechanism now I'm not massively up in electronics I don't a bit of electronics but the problem with, with uh, my studies was the maths was getting in the way I couldn't get around the maths but I have a little bit of a mechanical uh, mechanical mind and what I what I done was I seen a video um, it was uh, order of magnitude and he was uh, doing one of his Huff videos and it showed that Steve Huff had bought these um, mechanical scanning um, a spurt boxes that came from a particular company and you know that's I had this plan for a long long time to try and do this but that particular video that Order of Magnitude put out and where he says oh that's actually a pretty good box where it kind of it, it scans and it kind of does a random scan as well so that edged me on to get working on this and the minute I seen the video I got online and I tried to get the parts that I wanted knowing that some of them may not fit but in this occasion I was absolutely spot on and everything plugged together quite easy what I done was I removed the tuning knob <coughs> and I bought a servo that's used in a remote control car. When I mo removed the tuning knob, I was pretty damn lucky that this little part of the motor here connected straight in to where this knob came out of. So, uh, a, a little bit of a rush job, I cut a little piece of wood, stuck it on the side with my super glue. Um, I done a bit of a steep huff on it there, but I just wanted to get it sort of going and then work on aesthetics later. Uh, then connected a the servo motor, the servo motor to a servo controller. Now servo motors are used in remote control um, cars and airplanes and boats and stuff like that, and they would use a uh, you know, a remote control. So instead of remote control, what I wanted to do is connect it to a servo controller. So I bought this little servo uh, servo uh, tester. I seen it was six volts. So I uh, uh, searched uh, with uh, on eBay for a six volt power pack for a servo servo um, controller which meant rather than just get an ordinary six volt uh, battery pack I was going to get the battery pack with the little three pin little plug that it comes with so all I had to do was plug it in <coughs> along with that I needed a control switch so I needed an on, on and off switch so I searched again asked uh, dialed in a con uh, on and off switch for a servo controller for RC servos and it sent me this which all I had to do was all plug it all in there now you see a lot of these companies and they make these fancy boxes and your variable scan and all the rest of it and they sometimes 
cost an awful lot of money for you to buy. <coughs> all in all, this here cost me £25. This cost me something like less than a fiver. This was around a fiver and this was less than a fiver. So you're talking about you're talking about less than 40, around the, around the 40, 40 pounds mark, you know. But um, I bought a second servo just in case. But um, that means now that I can scan this radio manually and mechanically and have a digital control. So I'm going to give you a demo and turn on the little controller here. Turn on the radio. Oh, right. Right. Let's talk. Can it go around this hurry? Can it include this town? It's surely able to... So this is... You can turn it manually with that, but I'm still messing about with it. Right. That's the slowest. That's the slowest. And this is the fastest. But that's... And believe me guys, this was not complicated. It was all done with very, very limited skills. I just have to figure out now how to get that all nice and neatly in the box. I really wanted that controller to go at the front, but it doesn't seem to fit. Very often, some of these companies will, will fit it in at the back or just stick it onto the back. If I do put it on the back, I want to make it into the back of the radio, if you know what I mean. I need to cut out a piece the size of this and slot it in. <laughs> I also need to neaten up this. Now, there probably is a neater way of doing this than having the servo inside the box. But I couldn't be bothered with all the messing, so I'm going to try to make something nice and neat for around this. But this is a fully, this is a fully, uh, a fully variable scan box now. You can see the giants there moving. And just by turning this little dial here, you can alter the speed of the scan. I was very surprised that this was almost just plug and play. All I had to do in the line of manual labour is get a little block like this to support the servo motor on the outside here. I may try and figure out if I can get the motor inside, but it would it will involve possibly gear wheels and that, and it might be complicated. So at the moment, it's up on the outside. With this radio, you've got bass and treble as well. Um, this is AM. There is, there is other settings than this, uh, pulse width, where I can widen, I can widen the scan. Now I haven't fully figured that out. I'm just at the beginning of messing with this, but um, you know, um, 
if I come up with a more uh, a more um, a controller with more options, I might get that, and possibly that will give me the random. That could give me the random random um, scan, you know. But you can hear the motor there running away. But basically, that is turning. What this used to turn was used to turn by hand. So instead of this, I'm using a, a servo motor for, for, for a remote control car. So that is basically how these boxes work, you know. We'll go into FM here and see if we can get anything, folks. Uh, 
And then everybody go walk with So if you like this radio, you can communicate. Right. Stop having fun. Just play for us to uh, keep it. All right, so the way. Just put in the heart. Still not. Fall from the park. Like the bread. Who said all of them? And B. Me. Well, what are we? Something is. Intro. No. Right, that was. Um, not supposed to be a full spurt box session, like, but it was just. Uh, I was just giving you. An example and, and, and showing you how, how these manual analog radios can be hacked. Um, with, with some of these digital radios, it's a, it's a, a matter of cutting the um, mute wire, which causes it, the radio to continuous, continuously scan and cuts the silence of that scan while it is scanning. So when you normally turn on the radio and you press the scan, it goes into a silent mode, it scans through and it stops on a station. Um, you know, most of the time it is a simple thing of cutting a wire. But with analog radios, where it's not digital, it's a little bit more complicated. But in this particular case, it was almost like plug and play. I couldn't believe how easy it actually was. <coughs> so that is that is that what I have to work on now is uh, to make it nice and neat and that and uh, see where I go from there I really wanted this control panel you know somewhere on the front here but I may not be able to do that with all the wires that I have to try and hide um, so I may have to uh, cut a piece in the back and put it sitting in there and have something to support support it and have it flush to the back and have the battery pack uh, inside the box hopefully um, and hoping that I can uh, change the screws to hand screws where I can take the back off easy to change the batteries and stuff. So this battery pack only powers this motor and this is the controller and this is the little switch so that is basically that is basically that is basically all of this all all the mechanicals to get this uh, radio into uh, a scanning uh, radio from other Folks, I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, I'm going to work on uh, work away at this. Um, it didn't take me long to push that together. Actually, I thought it was going to be a very complicated process. <coughs> I'm just not 100% happy with the motor being outside here. But if I can make a something. To make this a lot, an awful lot neater, um, I'll come up with something. Maybe have a flush candle coming out here that makes it not, mo you know, as li little bit less obvious that it's sticking out. So possibly a little handle out here and another little handle out here. Right, it is a couple of hours later. So I spent the afternoon uh, cursing and swearing and uh, getting my hands covered in super glue. So I know how steep hop feels, but uh, this is basically the uh, the controller um, put into the bag. It still has to be cleaned up a bit here. Um, I had a nightmare trying to uh, install the switch, but uh, the switch is there. Um, here's our scan, and that's our variable uh, rate for the scan. And 
The battery is actually inside in the radio itself. So in order to change the batteries, I will have to um, take off the back. Um, if I can come up with something uh, easier, I'll try that. But um, I didn't fancy sticking a battery pack um, on the outside of the box at the back. Um, I see a lot of uh, box makers do that. I didn't want to do that in this case. So the um, six volt battery pack is actually in um, inside in the radio. So I have to take the whole back off to actually get at the batteries. Um, but I might be able to get a, uh, make a little hatch or something that I can get in, in a little easier. But uh, that's the progress anyway. Here. Everyone. I've been dry. No deposit. That's that's basically it. I'll I'll I, you know I'll keep working on it and see what I can do. But um, I'm kind of pleased. I'm pleased with it so far because I thought it was going to be very very complex. But uh, no, um, it's all in. Like um, it's just a matter of making this a little bit more neat and that and uh, little tweaks on it here and there. You know, it's a work in progress. Like. So uh, I will see you in the next one, folks. I uh, hope you enjoy that. <laughs>